Hi guys. I hope that you 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 are doing really really well. My last video was super dramatic, so <laughs> this one is going to be a more chilled out one just showing you random stuff. I could do these videos endlessly, endlessly, <laughs> um, because I'm the kind of person who collects way too many trinkets and, like, sentimental sort of items. Not necessarily practical items, just a lot of stuff that, um, you look at and go, ah. <laughs> but I guess that's functional in a way. <laughs> First, I'm going to show you a couple of props for an upcoming video. First one being these awesome magnified glasses. I spent forever scouring Etsy looking for the perfect pair because I had an image in my mind of exactly what I was looking for. And I found a vintage thrift kind of a shop called House of Madcap, uh, that had <laughs> exactly the kind I was looking for. <laughs> I love them. I would wear them just like on a daily basis, but since they're magnified, I think my eyes would hurt after a while. But I just think they're so cute. And the lenses make it same video, I have a dragon egg that I made, um, right here. I originally was only planning on making, like, three or four, but I started having so much fun with it, I think right now I'm at, like, 15. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I just totally lose track of time doing. <laughs> like, I'll think that So I made this, um, out of a two-part epoxy putty, um, I think it's called Epoxy Sculpt, it's by Avery, and it's really fun to work with, you just mix equal parts A and B of this gray putty stuff, you mix it together, and then you have a sculptable material for about an hour, I think, before it sets up, and you're left with a hardened shape of whatever you made, obviously. And then I, um, painted it completely black with just acrylic paint, a uh, dry brushed dark green over the whole thing. Dry brushed light green, just on the highlight points. Lightly. 
sprayed the whole thing with um, just a touch of uh, gold spray paint just to give it a little bit of a sheen and then I wanted kind of like a really glossy, almost mucusy finish sorry, that's kind of gross but um, so I covered it I tried to cover it in super glue and it's funny, the parts of it that are covered in super glue have kind of more of a dull kind of muffled sound and then the parts that the super glue didn't cover have a higher pitched sound when you tap but yeah, I'm really happy with how this one turned out it's one of my favorites so far next is actually a prosthetic um it's a neck prosthetic that goes on like this and then there's a face piece that goes with it that I used up all of my rounds of but I have one neck piece left as you can see it still has the flashing on it and some really ugly edges <laughs> It's basically a latex prosthetic that you would attach with Pros Aid and then blend out the edges with Pros Aid or Bondo if they're really bad. I just realized there's black eyeshadow on the back of this, so I may have just given myself a beard. Uh, and then paint over the edges with gold to blend it in. I made this piece for makeup demo I did at IMATS in January IMATS is the International Makeup Artists Trade Show so there's tons of booths of um, different makeup companies lots of demonstrations makeup artistry competitions things like that I just thought this piece made a nice sound and I actually, for my model I, um, I made her a crown out of the same material I made this out of the, um, epoxy sculpt so it's really versatile, you can do a lot of different things with it because in this case it was pretty simple, I just made a bunch of like orb sort of shapes with it but um for the demo for that crown I made like really intricate um filigree sort of shapes with it I can put a picture of the look I did there and that's also where I got the um that's also where I got the chest piece that I was wearing in the last video it was um what I had my model wear it's from an Etsy shop called Hysteria machine. I'm pretty sure she has some really amazing stuff. She's a super talented artist. Foam latex smells awful. It smells like eggs. <laughs> I cannot remember if I showed this in the last video or not. I think I might have intended to and then forgot to show it. Um, the Royal Apothic English Rose so it's obviously a floral scent it's from Anthropology. and that's pretty packaging this white rose there's a white rose on the top
little accordion fold. Um, a hand, obviously, holding a bunch of dandelions, and it says, you're dandy. It looks like an ice cream sandwich. It's kind of squishy.
create things as long as there's a lot of different steps and each step is very different but something that's just like the same motion over and over and over again like with knitting or crocheting up drive me crazy <laughs> This looks like I'm like angrily squishing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love you. <laughs> Beautiful. Next is actually a prop. The track and I go straight around right away. It's a prop from my last video, the decomper, that um, at one point I did this, but only very briefly, and somebody was like, why did you only do that for such a <laughs> brief moment? It was so nice. So I wanted to bring this back for this video. It might sound quite a bit different on just my nails to those metal fingertips. Hopefully it's still a good sound. It was so funny as I was editing that video because I was acting very dramatic <laughs> and <laughs> just very, um, I don't know, poised and intimidating, which is the complete opposite of how I normally act. And so it's just really funny to see the moments where I broke a character. So I would just go da, 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 da. <laughs> just like in a moment. Um so yeah, I have a lot of bloopers from that video that I'll probably put in another blooper reel. Once I've accumulated enough other ones to warrant and die. I love this thing so much. It's so beautiful. You can't really tell. It just looks black, but it's a really beautiful deep red. Something else I got on Etsy. I can't remember the name of the shop. But it was shockingly inexpensive. I think it was maybe $8, something crazy like that. And the shipping was a bit pricey, but yeah, it's just so beautiful. I would have expected much, much pricier. We have the ultimate sticker book. <laughs> I found this, um, just like buried in my room. This is so old. Oh, it's from Pottery Barn Kids in San Francisco. Where did this come from? Yeah. I'm not sure why I have this. But I thought that the cover made a nice sound.
favorite flowers are um, sunflowers and poppies. I also really like glue vines. I think that's because um, one of my favorite kids books is The Lupine Lady I don't know, let me know if you guys read that one It's about a lady that goes around Which reminds me, in the last show and tell, I offered to read you guys The Little Prince. And a lot of people said, yes, please read it. And I'm really disappointed because it turns out that's highly illegal. <laughs> because The Little Prince is not yet in the public domain. And reading its entirety it's a no-no <laughs> so I believe The Little Prince enters the public domain in 2019 so in two years I'll read The Little Prince <laughs> um, and I'm just so bummed because there were a few different books that I was really wanting to read ASMR style. One of them being Howl's Moving Castle. And in some ways, I like the book a lot better than the movie. One of those ways is that Howl has a lot more personality in the book. In my opinion, at least, I think he has a lot more sad is kind of um, not as cool. I feel like in the movie they made him way too cool. In the book he's kind of <laughs> dopey and um, like tries to be really suave and cool but it's just not. 
what is legal is for me to read you in the description, so I'll do that. <laughs> in which a witch bewitched the Hatter's daughter, and then some. Sophie lived in the town of Market Chipping, which was an inquiry, a land in which anything could happen, and often did, especially when the Witch of the Waste got her dander up, which was often. As her younger sisters set out to seek their fortunes, Sophie stayed in her father's hat shop, which proved most unadventurous, until the Witch of the Waste came in to buy a bonnet, but was not pleased, which is why she turned Sophie into an old lady. What spiteful witchery! Now Sophie must seek her own fortune, which means striking a bargain with the lecherous wizard Howl, which means entering his ever-moving castle, taming a blue fire demon, and meeting the Witch of the Waste head-on, which was more than Sophie bargained for. Yeah. The other book I really wanted to read another one of my all-time favorites. Blink, 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 blink. The Power of Thinking Without Thinking. Drawing on a cutting-edge neuroscience and psychology to reveal that the difference between decision-making and bad has less to do with how much information we process than with our ability to focus on a few particular details. It's basically, um, it's non-fiction. It's, um, it's about how a lot of the decisions we make are subconscious, and we will subconsciously pick up on different details or the human brain can be influenced in different ways that we may not even realize. I'm doing a bad job describing it, but I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, to me, it was one of those books that, like, once I picked it up, I didn't put it down until I finished it. I've read it two or three times, and the first time I read it, it was I read it all in one sitting. Um, which is, it's not that long. But, um, I guess it was... No, it's not like an action-packed thriller, but if you're interested in psychology, it's really, really good. I have a couple of art prints. The first one... Because it is a couple of ferrets surrounded by floral. One of my favorite ASMR channels right now is Stolen Toy. And she has a really cute ferret that she did a video with. Looks so creepy. <laughs> the other print 
is by one of my favorite artists, Koya Mori. And I didn't actually even buy this one. I, um, I ordered a bunch of art from her that is all, I would show it to you, but it's all hanging up in my room. Um, and so she threw in this one for free. It's a very stylish. a scarf, a blouse, a skirt, and the flowers, and leaves. She's kind of being swept up by the wind. It's really beautiful. Koyamori's art is um, very simplistic, uh, but detailed at the same time. And I mean that as in there's not a whole lot of shading, but there's a lot of Little details and patterns.
There's this lady who her booth was just completely full of dun 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 dun, dun, dun of different little creatures in this style with the bulging eyes. <laughs> it's kind of terrifying, but really cool. If I someday make enough money to be able to retire before I die, I would love to be one of those weird old ladies at the craft fair just selling strange homemade art. <laughs> also do. <laughs> There's just kind of, it's more, more special when you get to meet the artist. My favorite pair of shoes. I wear these almost every single day. Um, they are by a brand called And when I first got them and put them on, I, um, thought I was gonna have to return them because they were so incredibly uncomfortable. But then after, I'd say a week, maybe, of wearing them, uh, they broke in very easily. And now they are my most comfortable pair of shoes I own. I just really like them. They, they go with everything and they have a nice grip on the sole. appreciated. is Google Cardboard. If you don't know what this is, it's just a 360 viewer. You just pop your phone right in here. Close it up. Well, before popping in your phone, you would have to queue up a 360 degree video. it's a 360 video, you can look around. One of my favorite videos I've watched on here is one taken underwater of a bunch of sharks. So it's like you're underwater 
and then there's no sharks and you look around, look around, oh, a shark. <laughs> you can just kind of look all around you 360 degrees and up and down. It's really neat. It's obviously not a high quality as a virtual reality headset, but it's also only like $20, so you can't really beat that. This isn't particularly exciting, but it is a Jumbo Needed Eraser. <laughs> For charcoal, graphite, and pastel chalk. It's basically, um, It's really useful for creating subtle highlights. Because with a regular eraser, it's a bit too harsh. You'd end up with just like a white streak. But with this, you can kind of blot and dab and create a nice, subtle, nuanced highlight. my new planner I just got for August 2017 to December 2018. It's of course floral print. <laughs> the print is covered in flowers and Plenty of space for each day to write. Ah, I opened up to Christmas Day. I always get planners and then when things come up to write in the planner, I'm always like, is it for the show and tell. So now I'm going to do the Patreon name thank yous. First up being Jared. Hi Jared. Hope you're doing well. Colby.
so much.